Welcome to True You, where we'll talk about becoming the truest version of who God created you to be. I'm your host and the co-author of Lies Young Women Believe and the Truth That Sets Them Free, Dana Gresh. Did you know that according to a Stanford University study, the average female graduates college with more than seven sexual partners? What's more shocking is the number of them that express regret after their first sexual experience. Today, we won't hold anything back as we'll tell you what those women wish they'd known sooner. I'm joined today at the round table by Stacy Rudolph, the lead teacher for True You, and Alina Pitt, singer, songwriter, and actress. And today, no topic is off limits as always, but we're headed for a really sizzling one, the topic of sex. Um, I really wanna share with you my freedom story, but I wanna do it from the standpoint of the emotions and thoughts I was having as a 16-year-old. So I asked my friend, who's an actress, to share my thoughts with you. So I'm with this guy. He's amazing and always athletic, funny, smart. About six months into our relationship, he starts wanting more from me, physically. And I know I'm not ready for that. I mean, it feels great to be wanted in that way, but I know I don't want that. But I don't stop it. I mean, I'm just afraid I'll lose him, and I don't want that either. I've started journaling my feelings, almost writing letters to God. And I need to tell someone. I want to tell someone. My mom, my best friend, my cheer coach. I think I might find strength there. Find the strength and the freedom to be who I want to be, and not who he wants me to be. I want to tell someone but I can't. Hmm. Wow, that is so just enlightening to hear that you felt that way. I feel like yeah. you're really open and kind of free with your story, but. I am yeah. today, very transparent, right. you know, but for years, it's like the enemy had a gag on me mm -hmm. and I was so afraid to tell someone what I desperately wanted to tell them because right. I was afraid of what they would think about me. And I lived in that bondage. And because of that bondage, then I lived in the shame of actually becoming sexually active and more wanting to tell somebody, right. but I just didn't feel like I could do that. And I found that's a pretty universal experience for teenage girls that are getting the pressure to have sex with their boyfriend. Definitely. God's definitely brought you some freedom in that though. I mean, yeah. like you're a sex expert now and you write <laughs> sex <laughs> She is, she's a sex expert. And she writes like yeah. a bunch of books, millions of people have read well, your books. You know, what, you know? What, what brought me my freedom was getting into God's word right. and saying, I feel lonely. I feel like I can't tell anyone what is the truth. And you know, I found James 5.16, it's really simple, Alina. It says, confess your sins one to another and then you will be healed. And I got so broken that I was like, God, is that true? Is that true that I can stop being so broken? You can heal me if I tell someone. And so I did. And it was like I was reborn again. Like, like I was experiencing my new relationship with Jesus for the first time. It worked. I just beg you, if you're feeling that pressure, tell someone, tell someone today. But let me ask you this. So yeah. a lot of teens, I hear this all the time. And Text, text. Sex is yeah. a weird and tricky topic. Sometimes sex and text come together. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> sex is a weird and tricky topic, but I hear a lot of teens asking how far is too far. Yeah. So how okay. would you answer that? I'll be straight up with you. That's the wrong question to ask. <laughs> that is not the right question to ask. Let me, again, we know that the freedom is when we find the truth in God's word. So let me read to you Ephesians 5, 3. Hardly ever used when we talk about sex, but it says, but, but sexual, let there not be a hint of sexual immorality, for this is improper for God's people. A hint, a hint, Stacy. A hint, Alina. That sounds impossible. That does sound impossible in our social media sexting world. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you, like even just profile photos, they're like porn pictures, right? Yeah. There's a hint of sex in them. How do you achieve that in a day and age where sex is so common? And people tell me all the time it's old fashioned. This is an old fashioned book. I'm like, do you know that when it was written, it was out of style? It was never in style. But God, the question isn't how far is too far. The question is how far can I stay away from ruining the holiness and the purity of a gift God does want me to experience mm -hmm. with great pleasure one day. Mm -hmm. How far away can I stay from that line so that I can protect it? Mm. I love that. 
I think that we're always, just from what we see on social media and things and just mainstream church, I think that we always get the message that sex is bad. But like, yeah. no, like God created it. It's beautiful. He loves it, but in it's his context. It's beautiful. That's yeah. right. God, God created it to be beautiful and fantastic and wonderful. But it's more than just beautiful and fantastic and wonderful. It's a picture of something. Let me read to you in the same chapter, Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. It says, therefore a father and mother, a man will leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. And it's almost then like the Apostle Paul has ADD or something and changes the subject, but he doesn't. He says, I'm really talking about Christ in the church. So from Genesis to Revelation, we see that sex is a picture of the deepest spiritual truth there is, that there is a savior who loves us passionately and wants to be intimate with us. And so the question that I think everybody needs to be asking is not how far is too far, but if that's true, if sex is a picture of the greatest love, the greatest spiritual truth there is, how motivated is Satan to see that picture destroyed mm -hmm. in my life? That's mm -hmm. the question we need to be asking ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. We want to tell you guys, if you, um, are finding that you have a lot of shame, that you've made mistakes in past relationships. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again, tell someone. Mm -hmm. Just like Dana says in um, James chapter five, verse 16, it says that if we confess our sins to another, we'll be healed. So I want you to find someone, tell them the truth. Um, don't live in that secret place that, I feel like secrets sometimes make us sick and they trap us. So don't live in that place, tell someone. Seek God's truth because God loves you, the true you. Amen. If you enjoyed today's conversation, we invite you to join us online for deeper discussion at liesyoungwomenbelieve.com. We'd also love for you to send us your one minute video freedom story. Get all the details on our website. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, be the true you. God created a masterpiece when he made you. Till next time.